So I think there's a couple of things. At, at the first, we weren't quite sure, you know, of the impact. And then now we actually know that people who, for example, had COVID and used tobacco um, were worse off. They didn't do as well as um, people who did not use tobacco. And at first there was a lot of confusion because there were some papers saying that smoking was protective for COVID, that people who smoked didn't get as much COVID. And it was like, it, it, it's something didn't come quite right across that. And it turns out these studies have some serious problems. Some of them were actually um, funded by tobacco companies, uh, which questions um, some of the independence of the findings. And now the findings are a little more robust. We, um, data are just emerging in terms of use and prevalence. One of the few things that is starting to look like, but again, is a little too soon, that it, didn't look, it doesn't look like a prevalence, like the proportion of people that use tobacco increase. Uh, some people did try to quit, but there are some people that actually smoke uh, larger numbers of cigarettes, for example, during the pandemic. So it's not that they were new smokers, but it was current smokers that use more cigarettes. So so that is something that we're going to need to uh, look carefully. But for example, I know in some places in the United States, um, vaping among youth uh, diminished, decreased because kids were not in school. And perhaps that, you know, the peer pressure and the social environment in which kids use tobacco was removed from them. So I think they, it's a little too soon to know on the data. In terms of policy, I think there was a pause, you know, so there's a lot of policy developments that were paused because all the public health priorities were focused. And uh, we hope that we're going to get back to where we were, you know, and start moving forward with tax increases, with, uh, you know, banning uh, some flavors and some other initiatives that were happening before COVID. I think one very, very important point to think about it is that during uh, COVID, the tobacco industry really enhanced their corporate social responsibility efforts. And they did a lot of donations and they did a lot of things that were no longer being allowed because these are marketing and even countries that have banned tobacco marketing, you know, how you tell a, a country in crisis uh, to not accept a, a donation or respirators or PPE or whatever. Um, so I think a challenge going forward is make sure that whatever door was open for the tobacco industry influence in tobacco control, that door closes back again. That this doesn't become a new uh, way to do business in which the tobacco industry has access to policy making. And I think this is where, again, nurses could have a very important role in speaking against the tobacco industry, because again, it's a product that um, kills half of its users, you know, so there is really nothing uh, for nurses to like about it. So I think it's going to provide nurses an opportunity to engage at the policy level in terms of denormalizing this tobacco industry and making sure that whatever uh, doors may have been open because uh, locations or countries or in need of, don of donations or funds, um, that these doors don't become an avenue for undue influence. So we're going to be watching for that. And mobilizing nurses. <laughs>